Hey, welcome back to the Caribe Norway channel. This is Eric of Caribe Norway, back with another video. This one's a bit more music focused. As I mentioned in the previous video where I was going over the MacBook Pro, uh, Pierre and I just recently released a song called Drive With Me, and we're gonna go over the production and arrangement of that song in this video today. This is something that we wanna do for basically every song that we put out. I think sharing some of the behind the scenes, you know, there's no secrets here in, in music production. I feel like, you know, keeping everything open, freely sharing, just allows everyone to kind of grow together. And so as Pierre and I have kind of started on this journey over the last year, like 2021 has been us getting serious about songwriting, about music production and arrangement. We've learned a lot. And Drive With Me is the first song that really kind of kicked this off for us. It was created in a very sort of organic place. I had just bought uh, Novation Peak here after we had had some success working with virtual synthesizers. And I just knew that for for my brain, I, I needed knobs. I wanted to have something physical to interact with. Yeah, so I, I bought the Novation Peak. I brought it over to Pierre's house and we just, just played around with it. And Drive With Me ultimately is what came out of that. Before we jump into this, there's gonna be a link in the description for stems for the track. So if you wanna remix the song or if you know there's just you wanna dig into these multi-tracks, those are there for you and that's also gonna be something that we uh, wanna keep up um, for every song that we release. So let's get into it. All right, so here is the session, uh, drive with me. Let's uh, just start. Simple, let's just go through the instrumentals. Um, I got the vocals here, I'm just gonna mute those. Everything's in a folder so I can collapse it all. Let's just see what, we get, what we're starting with. Cool. You know, we're going for kind of a Sade style vibe as far as just some of the kind of clave and, and kind of syncopated hi-hat stuff, some of the ghost notes and things in there that, that we're throwing in. You know, get, trying to make sure it has, in some sense, like kind of an 80s drum machine sound, but also has a bit of a live feeling as well. So I have three layers of drums. Um, let's see what this first one is. That's the 80s super dry, uh, just very punchy, crunchy, punchy and crunchy. <laughs> What I have going on here is a RT7070. This is actually a free free uh, drum machine. You know, that kick is just a very classic punchy kick. Uh, sometimes I'll use this just for that. Um, do not like that kick. But this this company, Electronic Sound Lab, uh, they, have, they have a lot of good free little drum machines. Uh, it's kind of nice to just sometimes limit yourself to a one drum machine like I can only use the samples built into this and for writing especially I, I really like that um, that is something that we did on this song I'll get into that on the next drum track but otherwise I'm doing a little EQ um, just kind of cleaning up things and trying to give it a little bit more presence and then this uh, Red Opter 2 is a plugin I had to reinstall for this session specifically um, I didn't reinstall every plugin so there are gonna be some missing plugins. But this one I reinstalled just because it is pretty critical for the, the overall sound. So basically smashing the hell out of it, you know, really splatty, I wanted like a splatty sort of snare drum and just bring that kick forward. And then the next track, this is the, uh, So that's the original drums that we wrote this song with. It's Satala, which is a, I believe a free, is a free um, drum sampler. I use this thing all the time on basically everything at this point, uh, but we were just using the clean 808 sounds. Uh, and we just, you know, I didn't want to think about, uh, let's choose the right samples, let's do that. It's just, j let's just write, you know? And so let's just use whatever's here, not overthink the sounds of it so much because that can always just be changed later. Uh, so here, just basic 808 sound, maybe pulling a little harshness out so that the, it's not, not uh, competing with the vocals. So yeah, this was the original drum loop that we wrote the song to. And I was like, I want this to be a little crunchier. I want this to have a bit, a bit more of an 80s thing and less of a hip hop feel. And so the 80s drum machine is, is just bringing a lot of that splat and kind of punchiness. And the 808 is giving that low end support on the kick. 
but it's like super subby and super low. It's it's kind of subtle. And then the third layer is something I feel is a little unique to Caribe Norway Productions using an acoustic drum sampler. So that in this case, it's Superior Drummer 2. I've had this thing for <laughs> for so long. I can't even, maybe 10 years or so almost, 20, 2012, 2014, I want to say around there. I can't can't quite remember. So I just have, you know, some samples loaded, uh, heavily compressing them. And the idea here is if I listen to just these two drum machines, it's good, but it doesn't feel live at all. And there's there's kind of like a roominess that could be added to these drums. Um, and I could do room reverb, or I can trigger a, a, a sort of an acoustic sounding kick and snare to add to the samples. On top of that, I'm doing a lot of syncopated rhythm with hi-hats. I'm also doing snare ghost notes with this. So a ghost note is just a very light tap. Um, it's something that, that a lot of like, you know, funk and soul drummers will do. But let's listen to these acoustic drums. So that's adding like a ton of feel to this, to this uh, drum part. And yeah, mostly just with those those ghost notes, uh, some of these like emphasis hi hats. Um... Uh, then yeah, it's highly compressed, so it's not really adding a lot of punch and attack to the drums. It's it's more of that roominess. And I'm sure in the mixer on uh, Superior Drummer, like yeah, like I have the kick drum mic, the the one that's in sort of inside the drum is just all the way off. But it's mostly like these ambient tracks. So if I just uh, say solo, like the room. The, you know, the overhead there too. So that's really, that's the drums for the verse. And then really in the chorus, we're just adding a shaker. <clears throat> this is one of our first experiments with shakers and I think we've definitely figured out better use for shakers. This is just kind of a shh, 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 shh. having something that's a bit more, you know, like a little shorter and less sort of like wash, like kind of washy is a better approach. Um, but this does add movement. It it adds a little bit of kind of an air uh, to the to the overall drum sound. So you hear it, you know, just adding a little looseness, a little feel. Um, and then I'm adding this hats thing. This is, again, was something a little more experimental. Uh, added kind of really near the end of the production. Um, I think I might have taken it out if I was producing this today. This is kind of interesting, weird. I'm flan flanging it. This so is using the hats plugin from Auto or Audio Thing. I really love this plugin. There's like this randomness, randomness tool that allows you to kind of randomize things. You can LFO certain things. Uh, so it's nice for like adding percussion or hi-hats that have a bit of movement and change to them. So just the percussion together that we're adding. Yeah, and so you can kind of see like the hats is kind of playing off of the acoustic drum set is, is was sort of the intention. The reason I say I would take it out now is just in in the end, I don't really feel like it comes through in the mix that well. Then we're just back to the verse. No surprises. You know, there are some changes. And there's less hi-hats and stuff here. Yeah, and then the hi-hat starts to come in again when the vocals come in. The chorus is going to be the same. It looks like there's a bit more happening on this hat percussion track. Yeah. So then if I just kind of do the acoustic and the hats. So I think an another, another intention was just to you know, you keep keep that core groove 
going to us it felt like it was just it was working for basically the whole song you know but having these little percussive elements that that change is the is the intention there so then we get into the instrumental break same same as the verse uh we add some shaker and then there's a little bit of subtle uh hi-hats you know just whatever just throwing stuff in <laughs> then we get to the cool part <laughs> part c is is what we call it i'm still using the acoustic drums we have the shaker in here and then we have a another drum kit that we're sampling now for different drum samples i think that's still using satala so it's still the same sampler uh but just on a different track di triggering different samples Yeah, so pretty simple. Let's take the acoustics out. I'll take the shaker out. Oh, let's just leave the shaker in. It's it's obvious what it's doing. So yeah, same idea here. Pretty dry drum machine. Um, but I wanted more of a clap, kind of bigger, a bit more of a party vibe, you know, something a bit more up-tempo, upbeat. Uh, acoustic drums. So adding this sort of tom fill. But overall, like the, you know, the effect of these drums are similar, more of adding roominess, adding extra groove, extra feel with the ghost notes. It just like fills up the stereo, you know, fills their headphones up. If I take the acoustics out, it's just like right in the middle. And there's maybe, you know, there's some percussion going on. A little clotted. So those, those acoustic drums to me are doing a lot of work on this song. Cool. Let's get into the instrumental. Let's, let's add, some, add some instruments. So the song, the song starts with just two synths, a bass, and a pad. Love it. Oh, yeah. So, and everything was made on the Novation Peak. So that's, that's the first synth bass patch that I made on it. Uh, and then here's the first pad that we made. Lovely pad. Um, I call it brass pad. It's something I use a lot. We, we use it. It's good for writing because it's just an easy pad to use. And then we can go back and, and make a custom patch for the song. Throw, those, throw that bass in. Get those drums back. So the main thing we're doing with the bass here is um, the peak has this an thing called an animate button. It has two animate buttons. Um, it allows you to push a button and have a variety of parameters change. So here, I think I was just opening up the decay uh, or the possibly the sustain now. And now I can't quite think about it. So instead of having the bass be this kind of staccato thing. <laughs> In the chorus, it opens up with that anime button. So it's the same patch, um, you know, just push that button down when the chorus gets there. Pads don't change that much, I believe. Yeah. And then we get the, the main thing, which is what we call the pluck synth. So you can see we have like MIDI for most of this. Uh, don't have the MIDI for this. This was something that just kind of happened randomly, um, and we chopped these loops out and realized that we didn't have the MIDI to go with them, so we just had to live with what we had recorded, which I think sounds really cool. <laughs> so let's see just what this, this pluck synth sounds like. As you can see there, we just duplicated it. So it starts with where you can hear that there's previous notes playing in the reverb. This dun, dun. So we just like duplicate that because it's like, you know, in the in the mix, you don't really hear you can't really hear a lot of those details. So there's like the the, the loop point is not that smooth. It works. 
And then what happened is, so this was sort of just in a jam section. We chopped that section out, and then I started playing with the filter and made the made it a little bit more plucky. It, it kind of, to me, it sounds like a violin string scraping a little bit. That's how this, it kind of helps develop the chorus. You know, so there the filter's pulled back. It's a little more of like a bowed sound. And again, it's just the same duplication. And that's really the only thing that's being added to the chorus. Second verse, you know, this is a theme. It's the same. <laughs> Second chorus, again, the same. And then we get into the instrumental break. But instrumental break, you can see there's a there's just a pause on the bass, and it's going to go back to the more staccato bass. This just kind of like lets this section breathe a little bit. Oh yeah, and there is some subtle stuff that I added in here. Like literally random, you know, it's like kind of random stuff. I think I was just playing around, finding notes, but it's so background. I just wanted these kind of subtle layers um, being added in this section. So the big thing here is the guitar. These are two DI tracks that I reamped uh, to a real amp and recorded that. I'm gonna mute these. But yeah, just got the guitar recording, and that's just going into a compressor, a little Gullfoss to sort of smooth it out, and micro shift to give it a little bit of a stereo uh, effect. Um, so just the guitar. <laughs> And just kind of come out of the chorus into that. So the main thing with that guitar part is I really wanted it to feel um, sung. I worked on it until I could easily sing along to it as I was playing it. Da 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 da. Da, 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 da. It, as long as I felt like it, I, I could sing along to it, other people could as well. And also, I wanted it to sort of feel vocal or expressive in that way. I wanted it to feel re really relaxed and loose and just kind of, you know, songs in the 80s would take their time and, and give you like a solid space where you were, you know, where, where there was some sort of instrumental thing going on. Uh, revisiting the hook or, or some alternative melodies, some counter melodies off of the hook. That was, a, you know, really intentional for us that we wanted to have that be a part of this song. Again, to, to kind of pay pay homage to Sade 80s, you know, some, some 80s song structure, you know. <laughs> At the risk of losing, you know, losing people. Moving into the, the moving into part C here then, let's break down the instru instrument. <laughs> So we have basically I have this kind of double pluck. So this was like when we were working on it, this was like the I'm loving it part, like da 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 da, I'm loving it. Uh, uh, I think it's just, it's two different synth patches. So I think that was the original patch and then I, we wanted some extra sparkle on it. So it kind of gives it some mid-range body um, kind of space, and then you have this like nice shiny thing on top. Let's see what these pads are doing. I believe the pad changes. So it's brass pad now, and I think it goes totally different pad, same track. <laughs> like what am I doing? Oh, see, there's some filtering on here that's not in effect right now. Yeah. Some groove, and I got these subtle things that are that are going on. Let's let's just let's see what these are doing. <laughs> yeah, this thing. I, don't, I... <laughs> so 
So there's this like really, I think I call it the soft flute pad. A super subtle part of the, the instrumental, but I hear it every once in a while when I'm listening to the song and, and I don't know, I, I, I like I like I like when I hear that. You know, just just knowing that there's something else going on and there's a little bit more depth to the production. It, it kind of makes you want to listen out for other details like that. If you kind of can immediately, oh, it's just a, a bass, a pad, and a drums, you know, you don't, you're not going to, like, listen to it over and over again looking for new things. And so if you if you tuck in some, some things like that, you know, you keep people listening is the hope at least. All right, drums and bass. Love that bass. Second bass patch ever ever made, I guess. <laughs> Super weird, funny, like sounding on their own in a way, but yeah, they got a lot of character to them. The only other things to talk about aside from vocals are two quick things. I have this riser. Um, again, this is has a plugin that I don't have installed right now, uh, which was doing a filter sweep on it. So that's a fairly dramatic effect that is not in place right now. <laughs> it's like a whoo at the end. So that's just, you know, just adding some excitement to the section. You don't always need to put a riser in, but sometimes you need to build that anticipation or start to signal to the listener that something's about to happen. That's a really common practice, like just making sure you have something change, maybe the measure before or maybe take an element out a measure before you're going to a new section in a song and cueing the listener and saying, Hey, something just changed, like a small thing just changed, that maybe a big change is about to happen. When that big change happens, it's it's kind of like a positive, a positive feedback loop for the listener that they're like, oh, I think something's about to happen. Oh, something just happened and oh, it feels good. You know, like having the listener be able to participate in the song in that way, I think is uh, important. Um, another thing that I tried, you know, success on this was maybe a little minimal is just kind of adding some car driving sounds during the guitar solo. So you have like some stereo movement. Again, Something about these earlier productions is, is sometimes I'm not going as far as I should. Like, why not have this be a really obvious, like, cars driving by? And so trying to be more subtle and subliminal about it isn't always necessarily the best approach. So, you know, in, in a way, I've found that these, these kind of more subtle things, while they do add, it's also important to just kind of, like, you know, shove stuff in people's face and be like, this song is about driving and here's some cars driving by. And while you have this meandering sort of windy road guitar part, you know, like that's sort of the, the idea. But cool, that, I mean, that really is, that's the instrumentation of this song. Uh, let's get into the vocals. So yeah, I think a, a, theme, a theme of this is gonna be simplicity. I'm looking at the vocals. There's just three vocal tracks. Uh, the next track that we're working on has like, six times as many vocals i guess <laughs> but again this is you know this is us getting into this getting started but let's dig into these vocals and kind of let's break down we'll break down a little bit of the vocal chain i'm sure there's some effects that i used to use that i'm no longer using look at these vocal chains ridiculous i also realized that there's a reverb on this session that um i don't use anymore uh so i just threw a quick reverb on um, but it's not the same as that's in the actual song but 
So that's uh, that's Pierre, uh, lovely, lovely voice. Uh, trying to do, in a, in a sense, you know, he's doing he's doing his his own voice, but trying to really channel Sade, like, and and sort of the the way that she might construct her melodies. Let's listen to this raw, just to make make Pierre um, uncomfortable. <laughs> Yeah, there is one effect on his voice that uh, I'm not using anymore, the dopamine. It's a great effect. I just found something that does the same thing, but just in a way that works a little works a little better for me. Trying along highway one, the ghost keeps me company. Yeah, I mean, it sound, sounds pretty nice on its own. Um, I don't remember what microphone we used on this now that I'm thinking about it. In this in this stage of things, we were trying a bunch of mics out. We have songs where we change the vocal mic in it, you know, just to try. Let's just try a different one for this section. So uh, it's a little hard to remember what we were using. But I'll just quickly run through my vocal chain. I'm not going to get into like the details of the settings, but we got auto tune auto tune going, um, EQ. Trying along highway. You know, just using this to control sort of the boominess. Uh, I got to soothe. Trying along highway one. Doing its things and DS. Trying along highway one. Compressor. The ghost keeps me company. The tube saturation. And just Left a... my friends behind. There's my voice. The ghost keeps me company. So not a not a whole lot going on his vocal, but you can kind of see I just I do small things like I'm not compressing it a ton. Along highway one. But you can also see it was recorded in um, on an, like a sort of a Neve style preamp, and we were pushing it pretty hard, kind of into saturation. So the preamp was sort of compressing the signal in a sense. Um, so I'm not compressing it super hard, just you know just helping smooth it out a little bit more. We do have a lot of these. Uh, sends going on. Uh, one thing that I did try out, this is the first song I used this, basically my replacement for that dopamine effect is Vocal Sugar, or I'm calling it Sugar. Pretty incredible plugin. I did, wasn't really sure how to use it, so I used it as a on a parallel bus so that it's like effects only if I solo it. Along highway. So I bring in the main vocal again. Uh, let's go to a different section of the song. I can't wait to, I can't wait to pick you up. I can't wait to pick you up. So it adds a little bit of that like excitement and air on the vocal. Um, I've definitely dialed in how I use this plugin for, uh, since this this point. So we have a main vocal, and you can see sometimes the main vocal gets muted and the harmony takes over. This this is something that we learned through the process of working on this song. Um, we were just kind of freely throwing harmony ideas out there, freely throwing melody ideas out there. And it kind of got to a point where sometimes if the harmony, you know, so if the main vocal is doing a certain move, you know, cer certain melody and the harmony is doing other ones, we're just, we're just doing what sounds coolest to us at the time. Uh, we're not really allowing one vocal be the main melody. And that's something that we really have, have tried to focus on with our new uh, vocal parts is really establishing that main melody and making sure that the harmonies follow that. And if they don't necessarily follow it, that they don't move so much that they pull away from that main melody. The solution I had for this song is that the lead vocal track isn't always the lead and the harmony isn't always the harmony. They kind of alternate roles. So sometimes I turn the lead vocal down and let that harmony be the lead and vice versa. And that was just to kind of create a bit more of a consistent melody because uh, sometimes, you know, the lead or the, sometimes that harmony would just pull the lead in a, in a place that didn't make sense or the other way around. But let's just listen to these two together here. Left my friends behind and we'll see. I can't wait to pick you up. So the harmony is the same vocal chain. Um, aside from this other compressor, <laughs> LA-2A style compressor that I am not using anymore. Um, although I love that, that gem 
Comp LA is great. So they're pretty much the same effects because they they were kind of playing the, the same role. Won't you drive with me? I know you'll take care of my heart. This will take us near and far. The sun sets here for us. Oh, and one thing you'll notice on all of these items, there's this FX thing. Um, I, there's vocal line, which is just kind of allows allows you to determine this is the lead vocal, and if you're doubling it or harmonizing to it, they'll align it so that you don't have like, you know, if you sang a little out of tu- out of time, it'll line those things back up and kind of make them feel a little bit more like str- like really perfect doubles, like like inhumanly perfect. <laughs> there was like a weird little clip in there, or like a pop. I think at the end of this line. And And I I think what's happening is that this vocal here is cutting off, and this is the lead, and you can see this harmony extended. And so where this cuts off, you know, just around there is when it sort of just like cuts off the, the double. And this is mainly where my vocal comes in. I have a couple, you know, small moments. Um, let's just see what I'm doing to my voice. Drive with me. I know you'll take care of my heart. So uh, this was, you know, meant to be pretty dramatically affected. So I'm melodining, I guess. I don't remember doing that. And then auto-tuning. I can uh, get rid of this secondary auto-tune. So super a uh, ten retune speed using the classic sound, so it's like giving you that like locked in auto tune sound, um, cutting a ton of low end out. Really like anything that was interfering with Pierre's vocal, cut that out. Drive with me. Uh, DSing, compressing. Drive so in this case, I'm comp- compressing my vocal a bit more than Pierre's, distorting all the way up, which is not something I would commonly do. But it really gives you that, like that sort of buzzy, like intense sound. Um, soothe, cleaning up some harshness. Drive with me. Just kind of smoothing things. A little micro shift for stereo. Drive with me. More EQ, more DSing. <laughs> yeah, the idea there is that we have this very relaxed vocal with Pierre. Trying along highway one. And as we get into that chorus, we need we need like a big lift. Won't you drive with me? I know you'll take care of my heart. This will take us near and far. The sun sets here for us. And then, like, allows me to do a little flourish at the end for something different. My cameos in the verse. I got a spot. I got a spot to show you. Yeah, then same thing. Uh, the, the second chorus is different. Um, and that's part of... That's that's partly because of what I was saying before, where we were uh, doing our harmonies and melodies just kind of at random. Um and just doing what, what sounded best to us rather than saying, like, this is the melody and we should stick with that. Won't you try with me? It's like right off the bat there. You try with me. So, like, our, our main melody for that drive with me moment is drive with me. But then, like, the second chorus, we get to get it all spicy. Won't you try As far as the the C section of the song goes, um, Pierre's basically harmonizing himself the whole time, 
And then I start to break off a little bit and do things that are a bit more ad libby. You know, like here I had this sort of what I sing was my original vocal melody idea for this part, for this line. But we just sort of went with both ideas, had Pierre do his, and I, I sang mine over top. The look in your eyes, and it kind of leads into... Taking a ride, taking a ride, taking a ride, taking a ride with you, baby. So I'm just I'm just doubling him there to support. And I think where I come where I start to branch off is here. Taking a ride with you, baby. Baby. Come on now, baby. Come through. I'm right. Let's uh let's start to put it together. That pretty much covers it. I mean, this song is pretty simple. You know, there's some of these subtle synths, but otherwise, you know, what you're hearing is 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 what you get. Having those acoustic drums in there, that's a that's something that I think we're really we're going to continue to use in our songs. Um, and I think it's it's adding a lot. You know, some sound effects, some risers, little individual moments are something that you know I'm getting better and better at at, at doing instead of just kind of, kind of having each section be the same every time. You know, making sure that you're adding an element or, or taking an element out and replacing it with something a little bit different. Um, you know, there's another song where it's like verse one had a guitar and then verse two, we changed that to a synth doing a slightly different melody uh, just for a little bit of variety. But yeah, that that covers it. Thanks for checking this out. We'll have um, more videos as we release new songs. Uh, we collaborate with other artists and have songs coming out with them, too. And as long as they're cool with it, I'll do some production breakdowns. Uh, we'll get Pierre in the room for these production breakdowns in the future. We're just not in the same city uh, right now. He's out traveling. But yeah, let us you know. Let me know if there's anything you'd specifically like to see. I think in the future I want to do some like plug-in feature videos uh, where I'm just like calling out p plugins that I use in every session and what I use them for. Um, you know, having them be a little bit more like kind of short little videos. You know, like a five-minute video kind of going over some uses I have for specific plugins. In addition to that, I have a PC laptop coming in the mail, hopefully soon, supply chain issues uh, notwithstanding. This laptop coming, it is a top-end AMD um, like HX something, in Ryzen 9 5800HX, something like that. It's got a 3080 in it. So I kind of went all out on a laptop uh, to compare that Mac to. Uh, and I think, you know, once I once I get that video together, I'll have made my final decision on how I'm going to upgrade this desktop PC uh, and move into a more mobile setup. Maybe I'll be making the switch to Mac. Maybe I'm staying with PC. I'm not exactly sure yet. I need to use a gaming laptop and see if the noise issues and the heat and the battery life and those types of things are going to make the whole make that not worth it to me because I do need to rely on that computer as a laptop and have a usable battery life. Um, and then any further follow-up I have with using the Mac, working on the Mac, uh, will definitely be in another video as well. So thanks guys for the positive response from the MacBook Pro video. You know, just hoping to do this a little bit more regularly, get more comfortable with this. I'm normally the guy staring at a computer you know, doing production stuff in a DAW, so I'm not used to doing this whole video thing and interacting with people, um, interacting with sort of this kind of, you know, imaginary audience. You know, if there's any, any, uh, anything that I can do to improve, improve uh, the content here, I'm all ears. So I hope you guys enjoyed, and I'll see you in the next video.